All right, everyone, Dave here again with another exciting tutorial. And today I want to talk about animating the camera in Unreal, okay? Sometimes you might want the camera to move and you want to render out a video and you're like, what the heck is going on here? I feel like I can uh, make a game with the game engine, but how do I animate the camera? And that's what we're going to talk about. So I have uh, what's called Rural Australia loaded and I just found that off the Epic Games Marketplace and uh, it was free to download. I know they're, it's currently unavailable. I think they're trying to update it for Unreal 5. Um, notice that I'm in Unreal version 4.26, okay? So, um, but it doesn't matter. You can um, just have a blank scene. I just have something in there to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. So let's go ahead and just kind of dive right in. First thing I want to point out is this is the regular kind of perspective camera. And if I switch here, I can go to cinematic viewport. And now I have kind of some additional controls here where I can kind of like, um, I'm just going to kind of get back out to the road here. Um, I can look here and I could set my uh, grid for kind of rule of thirds. I could have the center. I could have the crosshair. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and disable it, but I feel like Notice um, I can also have like safe areas and stuff like that. Notice that I didn't have that just with the default viewport. Okay, so I'm going to put that back to cinematic viewport. Um, and now it's good. Hey, I'm looking at my, you know, my um, my actual camera. And again, I'm going to go back out to the road here. There we go. Awesome. So now what? Okay, well, I'm going to just set up a few things here. So I want to create a what's called a level sequencer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, the cinematic. Um, here's rural Australia. So here it is. And if I go to content here, you can see I've got a lot of stuff here. Um, and I'm just going to, again, in the rural Australia, I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm going to just right click and I'm going to go to new folder. And I'm going to call this my uh, camera movements okay and you could call that obviously whatever you want and if i double click on that now i can go in here and then i can go into um i can right click and i can add if i go to animation i'm going to add a level sequence okay and this will make a, a level sequencer um, and i could rename that in a second i'm just going to leave it alone but if i double click on it it's going to bring up the sequencer okay and i can see that down here Another way that I could get to that is up here, add a level sequencer, but um, it's right here. Now notice it's it's kind of weird how my browser is getting, this is kind of tight right up here, um, kind of a little cramped. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna move my content browser. So I'm gonna grab the tab and I'm gonna move it up here. Okay, awesome. And I could kind of grab this, move it like that, grab this, move it up here like that, whatever I need to. Okay, great. Now I can see this, I can see my content browser because that's something that I'm going to need to see. I'm also gonna need to see my sequencer down here. And on the sequencer, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on the camera icon. Okay, great. Now I just made a new camera and I can see that uh, sign camera actor right here. And um, I have kind of a timeline that I can keyframe stuff. So, well, what does that exactly mean? Well, let's take a look at this. So if I go to the, um, if I open this up, transform, here's the location, rotation, and scale, and that's of the camera, and I can see that I'm at frame zero. So if I want to key this, I can go like this. I can click on these plus signs of location and rotation. I can see that that formed a keyframe right here. Um, and then I can go, forward, let's say to 90 frames. And now I want to also have auto key turned on, which is this button right here. Now, if I move my camera, so I'm just going to kind of pull back a little bit like that. Okay. And you can see that it keyed it. And if I, if I scrub through here, I can see that that's the, um, kind of the motion that it did. And notice that I didn't even use my whole kind of potential timeline. I could have, you know, typed in more frames down here, but I'm just going to, I don't want this to just be like blank space. So I'm going to kind of grab this end and pull it right there. Okay. Now I'm only looking basically at that area. Now, 
why do I want that movement? It, you know, whatever. I'm just setting up a shot. It doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of going to do two shots, kind of composite them together, and then render it out. So that's kind of the goal of what I want to do here. So now um, I might go ahead and save this. Okay. So if I hit the save icon right here, it's going to save that. And I can see that it gives me kind of a preview here. And I'm going to just go ahead and rename this. So I just right click on it, rename it. I'm going to call this shot one. Okay. There. Awesome. Shot one. It's, it's, it's there. And here's everything with shot one. Now to get the next shot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select shot one and I'm going to go to uh, duplicate. Okay. And you can see, Hey, it named it shot two. That's awesome. And if I double click on shot two, it's going to be uh, right here for me. And I can see that it has exactly the same camera cuts. Now, if it looks like I'm not looking through the correct camera, if I click on this, it's going to get me back to my camera that I'm dealing with here. Now, I'm gonna delete these keyframes, so I'm gonna drag over them and then simply hit delete. And I, I, I wanna make sure that I'm at frame zero. And now let's say if I wanted to do, I don't know, some type of other camera cut. So, so let's say I wanted to, I don't know, kind of be looking down like this. Okay, and I want to key that. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign uh, here and here. And this is the exa exactly, you know, it is the same camera, but um, it's not going to lose shot ones, keyframes, and it, it'll be fine. So now I'm gonna kind of move forward here. And this could be any length. It doesn't need to be 90. It could be, I mean, it could be a thousand frames if you wanted it. You know, this really slow kind of moving camera, like however you wanna do it. Um, and now, um, again, I've got auto key on. So any change that I make is going to just automatically register, kind of pull back here. Okay, like, I don't know, let's say it's something like this. And I can see there it is, just so we can kind of tell that it's, you know, a different camera cut. And you can see that if I hit play, hey, that's cool. Awesome. So let's say if I'm happy with that, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to click the save icon right here. And, okay, great, I've got shot one and shot two. That's perfect. So now... The question becomes, how do I put the shots together? Okay, I want it to be kind of in this master um, scene. So here I am in my camera movements. I'm just going to um, right click and I can go into animation and I can say master sequence. Okay, so, or I could go right here and I could say add master sequence. Okay, awesome. And right here, it's saying, hey, where do you wanna put it? So I'm gonna click on this. And I'm going to say, well, this is rural Australia that I'm working in. And I can see that um, my camera movements, that's where I want to save it. And I'm going to just say create master sequence. And you can see that boom, here it is. Master sequence is right here. Now, if I double click on that, here's my uh, camera sequencer. So I'm going to double click on this. And this is going to allow me to put those shots together. So. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and double click and it should be coming up. Okay, now I have the op, you know, the option. Here's my shots and I can go here. I'm just going to um, select these and delete kind of what it's given me. And I'm going to go back here to my camera movements and here's shot one. Okay. It doesn't matter what order I bring these in. I could have like 10 different shots. I could bring them in any order that I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it down into here. Okay. Awesome. There's shot one. And you might be saying, well, Dave, I don't see it here. Well, if you click on the camera, uh, you'll see it. And, and that's our original, remember? Now, if I want the other one, um, I'm just going to put this at the end of this. Okay. Awesome. And I'm going to go to shot two and I'm going to drag it down here. And if it wasn't exactly at the end, I could just kind of drag it down and now it's exactly there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on this thing so I can kind of see if I hit play. There's that first shot 
And then I've got this second shot, super dramatic, you know, high angle, whatever. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of wasted space here. So I'm gonna just bring this here so I don't have all this wasted space, okay? And again, you can have as many kind of creative camera angles and cuts that you want. But now, how do we actually, you know, render this out? So, and actually that's pretty easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this render icon right here and boom, this pops up. I'm gonna say, what do I want? I want it to be a video sequence. And where do I wanna put it? Um, well, before I do this, maybe I'll go like this. I'm gonna to go to my desktop here and I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this my Unreal Movie. Okay, awesome. Now, if I come back here, I'm gonna click on my render icon and I'm gonna say, okay, video, that's awesome. And output directory, I'm gonna click on the three dots. I'm gonna say, okay, on the desktop, here, here it is, my Unreal movie. And I'll just leave it like that, go ahead and select folder. And then I'm gonna hit capture movie, okay? Um, and then I could decide if I wanna save it or not. I'm just gonna hit uh, don't save right now, and it's, but it's still gonna render it out. And then it's just gonna take a little bit of time. I can see that it's doing its thing. And when it's done, I should be able to minimize this, go find that video, and then play it, okay? Hey, look at that, it's, it looks like it's already done. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. I'm gonna go into here. And um, let's see, so it should be an AVI file. Here it is, 30 megabits. If I double click on this, oh, okay. So I can't play it right now, okay? so. Um, I'm on a Windows machine. Maybe I don't have the right kind of Kodak installed or whatever. So um, that's why I like to use what's called Media Encoder. Okay, is this is Adobe product. So I'm just gonna go to Adobe Media Encoder and I'm gonna open it up in Media Encoder and it's going to uh, uh, convert it to an MP4. So I'm gonna double click in this area here in Media Encoder and I'm gonna go to My Unreal Movie. Here it is. And now I can see that that's gonna produce an MP4. That's what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play. Now it's thinking. Okay, boom, it's done. Let's take a look at this. Um, I can see that an MP4 is actually significantly smaller too. This was 30 megabits, this is only eight megabits. And if I play this, I should be able to play this. Ah, there we go. So that's a video that I could send to grandma or you know my friends, whatever I wanna do and say, hey, look at this cool scene. Um, so. Rendering out of Unreal with these cameras, um, you can see that it's nice and fast, crisp and fast. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you like this stuff, make sure to subscribe. I'm pushing out new videos every week in all different programs related to computer graphics. I just love this stuff. I love teaching this stuff. So hopefully this was helpful. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.